Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Hey, let's plant an herb pot. If you've ever wanted to get into gardening or encourage somebody else to get into gardening and it seems overwhelming, this is the video for you. The easiest way that I know of to get into growing your own food is to start small. Start with something that's manageable and start with something that has a high success rate and I would suggest an herb garden in a little bitty container like this. So I'm going to show you how to do that, how absolutely easy it is, and how anybody can get into gardening with this simple off-the-shelf method. Gardening can be intimidating. There's a lot to know and a lot to learn up front about planting like a, a vegetable garden like the one behind me or growing you know tomatoes or things like that. It can be intimidating. But the best way to start is just to start. The best way to learn gardening is to do it. I've got these herbs here. My wife went to a, a local nursery and picked up these potted herbs. Now the benefit of buying plants like this is you don't have to start seeds. You don't have to know how to start seeds. You can start with seeds that have already been sprouted for you by these companies. And so we've got some thyme here. We've got some basil, some dill, a few other kinds of herbs here. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to buy a bag of potting soil to buy a little container, to buy some plants, and just start growing your own food. Let's talk about containers first. This is an ideal container for a small herb garden. You could get two or three plants in here, but notice in the bottom, whenever you're gardening, you need to be able to water your plants, but your plants need to have good drainage. And so we're gonna need to drill some drainage holes in the bottom of this. You could go to the store and buy uh, containers that already have holes in them, some containers are, are uh, ready to be drilled. Plastic containers have places that they suggest you drill here. It doesn't matter. Just drill some holes in the bottom and make sure that if you water your plants and you overwater them, or if a rainstorm comes, all that water can drain out. The soil that you put in there will retain some of that moisture, but you want it to be able to drain out and not get waterlogged. This would work perfectly for a little tiny herb garden for your patio. A pot like this, or a deep pot, is not really ideal for an herb garden because you've got all that extra soil and herbs really aren't going to send their roots down that deep. You don't need all that soil to cost you more to fill up a pot like that than you really need. So for an herb garden, something like this is perfect, something about that depth. This is one of those designed to sit on a railing. Something a little like this would be perfect for an indoor kind of kitchen window herb garden. You can throw some chives in there, maybe a little basil. That's nice. This might make a nice little kitchen counter uh, herb garden. And if you use it outdoors, you'd want to punch some drainage holes in the bottom of it. That's the downside of an herb garden indoors is you don't want it draining all over the place. So uh, you just got to stay on top of watering and don't let it get water low down on the bottom. Here's another container. This would be good for a single herb like a rosemary or a, some sort of a thyme or something. You could put anything in a container like this. Whenever you fill a pot, you want to make sure you buy a potting mix. You want to go to the store and just look for the bag that says potting mix. It doesn't really matter what brand you buy. Some people, you know, buy the high-end stuff. Some people buy the cheap stuff. I buy the cheap stuff because really it's all the same. Potting mix is high in organic material. Usually it's made up of um, uh, peat moss and a little bit of compost, a little bit of sand. It's not real compact stuff. If you're new to gardening, always buy potting mix. Don't buy garden mix. Don't buy topsoil. None of those things work in a pot. A pot has its own challenges. It needs to retain moisture, but it also needs to drain well. And so that's what potting mix is designed to do. So get you a bag of potting mix and just fill up your pot. You'll notice in potting mix, you find these little white specks. These little white specks are what's called perlite. And perlite is an expanded volcanic rock. It's like popcorn glass. And you can see they crush real easily. Perlite is one of those things that helps to add uh, tilth to your soil. It, it retains a little bit of air in the soil and uh, it can also retain moisture in the soil because it absorbs water really well. 
and uh, you can see that there's some wood chips in here and what looks like compost but most potting soils contain a little bit of organic material like this wood chip which really should be composted more but for the for the application we're doing here for the ease of gardening and the simplicity of beginning potting mix just as it comes out of the bag is perfect all right well we've got our our mix in there let's put some plants in depending on the growth habit of your plant you will arrange your plants in the way that uh, is pleasing to the site i want my dill to go in the middle because dill kind of grows up it gets kind of tall thyme is more of a ground creeper it's a ground cover and it will fill this entire area if i let it and it will flow over and cascade over you want to keep your kitchen herbs well pruned use them and if you don't use them still you got you got to trim them and you can dry that stuff but you got to keep them pruned or it's going to take over the whole thing all right so i'm going to put one thyme on each side i have a, a creeping thyme a pink chintz i've also got this other thyme a lemon variegated thyme and we're going to put one on each side might be a little too much for the pot but if you're wanting some gardening success just go for it and in the middle here i'm going to put our dill i've got a fern leaf dill and it should get a little bit taller than the thyme and that will give us a nice pleasing effect here always keep your label handy you always want to know what you have and believe me i've been gardening for many 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 years and i still forget what i planted if i don't put a label in so take your container squeeze the sides a little bit and push up on the bottom and then you can grasp your plant very gently turn it upside down and tap and it should just slide right out now look at these roots you can see the roots are kind of circling down at the bottom very gently just kind of tease those roots apart it's okay if you break some these roots are are going to be just fine and then take your plant drop it in the hole that you just put in and push the soil around it just make sure that it's nice and seated in there there we go we've planted our first herb this is so easy that you can do it too. All right, let's put another one in. We're going to put dill in in the middle. So I'm just going to take a, a garden spade. If you don't have one, you can use your hand and stick it down in there and just pull the dirt back until I have a hole that's about the same size as my little pot. Once again, always keep your labels close by. Squeeze and push. And that should just pop right out of there these roots are also a little bit bound up not too much so i'm just going to leave it like that and drop it in just like so again push the soil around the block of soil that you just put in there and squeeze it down super easy and you know what if you can do this you're a gardener we have one more here let's put in our other time over here now in our household, we like to cook, and we cook a lot. And we like thyme. We like thyme, especially with red potatoes, roasted red potatoes with shallots and peppers. Oh, it's so good. So we will be using this and keep the, keeping these things trimmed back. If they start getting too big, one plant's gonna crowd out the other plant, and they're all going to compete with each other for the nutrients down in the soil. Gardening is all about keeping your soil fertile. And if these plants get so big that you can't uh, that they're they're huge and they're overflowing then this soil in here is going to be depleted very quickly so what you want to do is as you keep trimming these plants you also want to fertilize about every two or three weeks with a very weak liquid fertilizer I personally for herbs like fish emulsion but fish emulsion is kind of stinky for the first day but it's really good stuff for herbs you could also use the uh, blue miracle grow all-purpose if you wanted to, there's nothing wrong with using chemical fertilizers, especially in a pot. Chemical fertilizers are uh, very pure. They don't have any impurities. Uh, they, can, they can be helpful for you if you're a new gardener. So let's get this one in. Those roots don't look too bound up. We're just going to drop that one in the hole. Lift up the plants a little bit so we don't bury all those wonderful leaves. I'm going to push it all down in there. And don't forget your label. Now, if you're like me, you don't like these commercial labels because they, well, they're just commercial looking. You know, they're not quaint. They're not attractive. 
Um, you can leave them here if you want. I like to sometimes come back and put my own little labels in there that I make myself. I just think it looks more attractive. I just think it's a little more quaint. And uh, yeah, these labels remind me of my graphic design days and commercialism. So yeah, you know, it's up to you. But there we are. We have now a little bitty herb garden in a pot. We can place this on our patio, keep it in full sun, keep it watered. And here's how you water it. Whenever you transplant new plants like this, you always want to water them in. You can use the hose. I have this little watering can. And you just want to make sure that you soak the soil so that the roots down in there uh, get in contact with that new potting mix you just planted them in. So give it a good soak for the first time. You'll notice that the water is draining out the bottom. That's what we want. Now, while these plants look like they're beat down a little bit, they're going to perk up just fine. And uh, they will start standing up. They'll start growing for you. They'll really enjoy this potting mix now. Now that they're transplanted, they have room for their roots to spread out. And guess what? You're a gardener now. So there is our little three herb pot. And you'll notice that I've got some other little pots with herbs in them. That's chamomile, yarrow, and a toothache plant. I've got some chamomile growing in a little pot down here. I've got some lavender growing over here in a little pot. Real easy to do. And way over here, I've got some basil and some parsley growing in a single pot. And that will thrive. In this pot, I've placed a mint plant and a rue plant. And these will do just fine. There's plenty of room in that soil. That pot is actually much too large for two plants unless you know about how they grow. Mint will take over an entire pot. Rue will grow more than one year. So this large pot is ideal for them. I'm going to let those two fight it out and see who survives. Okay, so I've shown you how easy it is to grow in a pot. I want to take you over to my mother-in-law's house and let's go show my mother-in-law how easy it is to grow in a pot. And I'll give you another demo on how to get more herbs into a small space and just how easy it is. How you doing, Love Lily? It. So I'm at my mother-in-law's house and uh, we've got this container here, a concrete container. It's got drainage holes in it. It's nice and broad and it's shallow like we talked about because uh, with planting herbs the roots don't really need a depth you know great depth like a container like that one or something um, so this is ideal and it's big enough where we can put several plants in here um, the thing about herbs is some herbs are going to grow and take over this whole entire thing uh, before you before the other ones can can grow up uh, some herbs are going to grow more in a tall uh, bushy habit like basil and uh, so you can combine those together and get a, a decent little pot. So we're gonna put some potting soil in here. We're gonna mend it with worm castings and just plant right into it. That's gonna use the whole bag. We're gonna use some worm castings to amend the soil. Worm castings are, are some of the best stuff you can use for making your soil life really uh, get a kickstart. Uh, it's very low dose, but when you're growing herbs, most of the herbs we grow, we're growing for the leaves and nitrogen's what you want in your soil. But this worm casting also has a lot of other good stuff in it, lots of micronutrients. But it's a very low dose of nitrogen. Nitrogen. It's a 0 .500 ratio of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphate. So uh, we're going to put this whole thing in here. Well, we're going to put about half of it in here and amend the soil real well. So we're going to do some arranging of our plants according to their growth habit. Basil tends to bush up and get tall, and so we're going to put these on this end where, um, you know what, we're not going to do that. I just realized uh, we've got dominant sun coming from this direction, so we're going to reverse this whole thing so that these don't shade out our ground cover. Uh, oregano and thyme tend to hover along the ground, and then we're going to put in some lemon balm just to be a nice pretty flower. and. Uh, you know, get you that nice lemony scent. So let me switch this around. There we go. Just like that. So oregano is going to grow about six to six inches tall, but it's also going to want to fill this entire this entire space. It's a very vigorous grower. If you don't want it to fill the space, you need to keep it cut back frequently. 
And every now and then you want to come in with a with a garden trowel at the edge of where you want your oregano to grow and root prune it. Just cut those roots just like that. And that should at least stunt the growth a little bit, long enough for you to get some herbs out of your more bush types. This dill, dill also seems to uh, uh, like to propagate itself through runners underground, and so you could get some of this dill coming up and filling in this space. Um, the beauty of these plants is they're all annuals, so they're gonna run their course and die off at the winter. But if you use this kind of stuff in the kitchen and keep it well picked, you can grow all of these herbs together in a dense method like this. It doesn't look very dense right now, but when these take off and start growing, this entire thing will be overflowing with herbage. So, it's real simple to plant these things. You just dig a hole. It couldn't be easier. And you pop the plant in. Keep your labels near your plant so you don't forget what it is. You don't even have to break the roots up on most of these because they're such vigorous growers. I'm going to put that label there so the family knows what they've got here. You just want to press the root ball down in there, make sure you fill in all around. Now this stuff again will cascade and fill this space. The thing about basil is you want to keep it from flowering. Once your basil starts putting up little blossoms, that's called bolting. It means the plant wants to put on flowers so it can make seed. And when a plant puts on flowers, it puts all of its energy and resources into maturing those flowers instead of uh, growing leaves. And basil tends to get kind of skunky when it puts on its flowers. So if you ever see basil flowers, they're not cute, they're bad, and you want to pinch them off. They are not your friend if you're using basil in the kitchen. Again, just squeeze the pot, gently turn it upside down. And here's some roots that are kind of circling around just a little bit. We're going to break them up. Shove it in the hole and pack your dirt around it. One more. Put some dill right here. All right, the last step in planting any kind of garden is to water it in really well. And so we're going to take some water and Gently pour it in here, let the soil settle around those roots. That's what we're after, oops. When I say that some herbs spread out, here's a good example. This is thyme. This is last year's thyme, and you see it's filled that entire bucket. Over here, I have another example. This is oregano. And this oregano filled this entire container last year. It died back due to the freeze, but now it's growing back again. And all that oregano, that's just one oregano uh, tray. That, that whole thing gets filled. This thyme right here will also kind of fill this area. This rosemary right here tends to not fill the area. They kind of, they, they can, but uh, in my climate, they don't really fill. I'll show you what rosemary does. Rosemary tends to bush out like this and grow up. It gets real woody. And you can see it'll throw up a another stem or another shoot every now and then. But rosemary in my climate does not really bush out or you know spread in the container too much. It just makes this a little woody bush. When you're buying herbs at the store, something like this is ideal. You want a plant that all the leaves are nice and green and doesn't have a lot of blemishes on it. Here's a plant that's a little big for its pot, but otherwise. It's mostly healthy. Down at the bottom, you see some damage from stress. Maybe maybe this hasn't, uh, well, when a plant gets this big, it's hard to keep it healthy because the soil dries out really well, uh, really quickly. The plant uses up all the moisture in the soil and transpires that moisture out through the leaves and becomes dry and stressed. So I like to buy my plants small like this. I think it's better, I think it's more healthy. So there's just a tip when you go to the store and you see something when you're like, wow, look at that. That is a wonderful, gigantic, sweet marjoram. I need all that, but this is a healthier plant. You don't need much. In fact, a half dose of this every two to three weeks is usually sufficient. So let's review. Buy a container big enough for the herbs you want. You want to give each herb about a, 
well about a basketball sized space if you can if you can't just go for it anyway buy a container make sure it has drainage if it doesn't have drainage punch some holes in it get a bag of commercial potting soil make sure it's potting mix dump that in your container dig a hole take your plant out of its little pot and stick it in the soil and that's it make sure you pack it down in there water it well and fertilize it with a liquid fertilizer that's all there is to it now what do you do as your plants start to grow as your plants begin to grow you want to water them frequently to test stick your finger down in the soil and if it's if it's about a knuckle deep maybe two knuckles deep if you feel no moisture in there you need to water them water until you start to see water flowing out the drainage holes and then stop and then come back and test it in a day or two maybe three it depends on your on your weather if it's really hot you'll need to water them more often these plants herbs prefer usually full sun you can put them out in your yard you can put them on a fence you can hang them on your fence you can do a lot of different things with them like that just make sure they get lots of sun and trim them frequently come and harvest from them clip off your thyme, clip off basil, clip off things that you want to eat, clip off the herbs. If you keep them well clipped, well harvested, they will continue to bush out for you. Clipping a plant actually encourages more bushy growth. So the more you harvest, the more you're going to get from them. That's how easy it is to begin gardening. I hope you are inspired to try an herb pot. If you're a new gardener, if you're an experienced gardener, share this video with people that you're trying to encourage and hopefully you will make a difference. Hey, thank you for joining me at Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. If you're a new gardener, if you've never tried it before, and this video has inspired you to try to grow an herb pot, man, I'm so happy about that. Please subscribe to our channel, and then you can learn to grow a backyard garden like mine. I focus on small gardens in suburban backyards. I have a little bit of space, and I invite you to join me to find out how to garden even further. Let's take the next, next step together. Subscribe to our channel, like us on Instagram. I'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.